Hi folks, interesting video log today looking at the lure of buried treasure across our land. Ah, the land of Great Britain that is. Treasures that are on display, pride of place, many of them in the British Museum. Some treasures that haven't been found. This is Carl James Langford on channel 01 to 1975 and this is my weekly video log. A video log that looks at my teaching that takes my students to various parts of the world and on this occasion treasure. But on one note, the 17th of April has been a great day, beautiful weather, been doing lots of teaching and one piece of treasure that I will be showing my students will be the island of Orkney so I booked all that up and going out and about looking at the landscape at my own doorstep to find local treasures. But now back to the lecture today with my images. The lure of buried treasure, the excitement of an ancient map where there's a cross that marks the spot of a legendary treasure buried maybe by mythical kings. Many such inklings of treasure, whether they're marked on a map, legends or myths, have persuaded thousands of people to spend their leisure time combing desolate fields, derelict buildings, sometimes using your eye, which I would do myself, maybe using a mechanical device, which I would not use, electronic devices, such as geophys, aerial photography, can help us find some of those lost treasures. There ain't necessary gold and silver. There are buildings that have been long since lost. Or maybe if you look at the Vindelander tablets, just basically strips of wood. Most of the spectacular treasures found across this fair land of Britain have been found completely by accident, with nobody actually going out looking for these objects in the first place. In the course of everyday work by navvies, people demolishing buildings, or simply getting on with their normal everyday lives. Sometimes looking for treasure can do great damage to archaeological sites, unfortunately. So it's when we find things by accident, the greatest rewards can be felt by the historian, archaeologist and anybody alike. Legends that have very much become reality. Many of the most intriguing. We find buried treasures associated with them. Legends and myths that seem to be just basic fleeting ideas in the minds without scraps of any proof. But some of these old folklore tales can lead us to long lost treasures. The district around Rillerton Manor on the eastern border of Bodmin Moor in Cornwall was for hundreds of years said to be haunted by the ghost of a druid priest. The spectre would emerge from his tomb in a nearby barrow and offer to any passerby a magic potion from a golden cup, which could not be drained dry under any circumstance. One day, a traveller took a drink and then threw the liquid back into the druid's face. Soon afterwards, his horse slipped and they both died. Now it makes you wonder how this story was told if the individual telling it was dead. But, nevertheless, this story at that exact spot was where a skeleton was found in 1818 with a bronze dagger and this beautiful gold and cup that you see in front of you, known as the Golden Cup of Rillerton. Three and a quarter inches high is believed to be of British workmanship, pure gold. It dates probably to about 1,500 years BC and is in pride of place on display at the British Museum. The next treasure you see now is the Mold Cape. Flintshire. Associated with a folk story, 
1825, a man and his wife walking home from market claimed to have seen a ghostly warrior wearing golden armour at a place known as Goblin's Hill. Some years later, while building a road, workers discovered a skeleton with a golden breastplate. Wow. When we think about treasures, we think of mythical locations such as this, Corfe Castle in Dorset, where a certain Lady Mary Banks was supposed to have hurled her fortune into a well, followed with it a keg of gunpowder, which brought tons of masonry crashing down on top of it. Legend myth. The treasure has never ever been found. But as we move on slowly, we turn to a more mythical place. King Arthur. The fortress home at Cadbury Hill in Somerset, where the king himself is believed to have had his fortress home of Camelot. But interjection here, folks. Camelon Junum, Colchester, Caleon are all seemingly to be the haunts of Camelot. But back to Cadbury Hill, there is evidence of a Iron Age hill fort here. In fact, evidence that is quite immense, believed to have been in the, the site in the ten hundreds of a mint for the Anglo-Saxon kings. For students of the Arthurian legend, the time has to be around AD 500. Modern would-be treasure seekers have believed that this site is to be the place of great treasures of Arthur and his knights at the round table. In fact, the archaeology bears out that evidence is to be seen at the site of this Iron Age hill fort from the 500s. Massive gateway discovered there and a great silver buckle of around the same date. But seeking King Arthur is maybe to be seen in the mind. We turn to Glastonbury Tor in Somerset. The meeting point for two of England's most persistent legends, the story of Arthur and the quest for the Holy Grail. It was to Glastonbury, according to great legend, that Joseph of Arimathea was said to have come a few years after the death of Jesus Christ. According to legend, he deposited in a church he founded at Glastonbury, the Holy Grail, the wooden cup, which was last used by Christ at the Last Supper, for which Arthur and his knights were to search unsuccessfully. The Abbey, on the other hand, as you can see at Glastonbury, is where Arthur may have been buried. It was, however, this edifice you see in front of you was built in the 1100s. It is known to have attracted great riches as Arthur's shrine, and with its dissolution in the late 1530s, it contained gold, which was confiscated by the king. It's rumoured that great treasures are hidden there associated with the period of Arthur, but these have never ever been found. This next item is factual rather than myth. A richly worked jewel from the 800s was found at Newton Park in Somerset in 1693. It's believed to have been the property of the great, the very great Alfred, King of Wessex and all of England between 849 and 899. He drove the Danes from Wessex, making the Danes subservient peoples under Anglo-Saxon control. This great jewel in front of you was found four miles away from Atholney, the Isle of Atholney, where a Benedictine monastery was established to, as a tribute to the great acts of Alfred in defeating the Vikings. The jewel itself may have been a gift bestowed upon the monks by the great king himself, known as a pointer head or an astel, which would have been connected to a long shaft. It's believed to have been used to read lines from religious manuscripts. Whatever its original purpose, 
and whether it directly belonged to the king himself or it was a gift to a monk or somebody from aristocracy. The Latin itself reads, Alfred had me made. It's on display in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. It was found in an area known locally as the Field of Gold because of the number of gold coins that have been found there over the years. A beautiful treasure. All of these treasures seemingly found without the use of those machines that I despise. And they're neither found by archaeologists. And we finish on another point. A treasure that you could all possibly find in record books. The story of how King John lost his treasure in the wash has excited treasure seekers for more than 700 years. The details are confused, but some facts are known. In October 1216, John was at war with his barons on his way north through East Anglia with his army and his tre treasure chest. Large quantities of jewellery, gold and silver. King John went a shorter route for his entourage up to 3,000 individuals headed across from King's Lynn to Wisbeck on October the 12th, 1216, and they never arrived. When the baggage train was crossing a section of dry sand near Wisbeck, it was apparently suddenly engulfed by a swift tide, still known locally as the Stolen Tide. According to some accounts, men, horses and treasures were lost in the sand. According to others, Many of the valuable possessions were saved and loaded aboard ships. Whatever the truth, nothing of John's treasure, even his regalia, survived. What is known today is that people are out seeking that treasure. The land itself, where the treasure was lost, is now farmland. And whatever equipment you're using would probably be undetectable under many layers of mud. I hope you've all enjoyed this video log today about the great treasures of Britain. We continue next week and I'm hopefully joined by you either in one of my classes in person or listening and watching this video log. Many blessings folks.